Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite artists of all time, a great illustrator and cover artist of science fiction and fantasy books, Roy G. Krenkel. Roy G. Krenkel, I recently unearthed this book, RGK, The Art of Roy G. Krenkel. And I thought, you know, I really ought to talk about this guy because this fella did some magnificent illustrations for science fiction and fantasy books. He started off illustrating in science fiction magazines and comic books, moved on to doing some fantastic covers. So yeah, let's talk about Roy Krenkel. Roy Krenkel was awesome. So Roy Krenkel, who was who, as it happened, was best friends with another fantastic fantasy artist, Frank Frazetta, did a bunch of really great work. And I first came across Krenkel for his covers, uh, his covers that he did for Edgar Rice Burroughs, for Edgar Rice Burroughs novels back in the 60s. And this book, uh, The Art of Roy G. Krenkel, this cover actually is from one of those Burroughs novels. He just did some wonderful work. So I thought I would start off the show talking about Roy Krenkel with some of those covers that caught my attention when I was first discovering the novels of Edgar Rice Burroughs and was introduced to these fantastic covers and the art of Roy Krenkel. So let's take a look at some of these covers first. So this one is Thuvia, Made of Mars. Thuvia, Made of Mars. This is the fourth novel in the Mars series by Edgar Rice Burroughs. And we see a green Martian skillfully done there in the background. And then we have Thuvia, who I assume is supposed to be Thuvia, running away from the Martian. Although, Thuvia is not blonde. So, slight artistic liberty there, but otherwise it's fantastic. And it has one of those standout things that you'll find in Crankle, and that is the ancient or ruined city, or bizarre alien city, which on Mars, it's all of those things in this case. So Thuvia, made of Mars, fantastic cover. This is a great cover. This is the mastermind of Mars, the mastermind of Mars. And we've got uh, Ulysses Paxton, who is the second, uh, the second person from Earth to go to Barsoom which is Mars in the Martian language. And there he is with, with Ras Thavis, the Martian scientist. And this was a fantastic book, by the way, one of my favorite Mars novels, and a really great cover by Krenkel. Here we have the chessmen of Mars, the chessmen where human beings are forced to fight on huge chess, chess boards in the Martian game of Jetton, which is you know, Martian chess. So yeah, The Chessmen of Mars. And next, I really like this cover. This next cover is great. This is the A Fighting Man of Mars, A Fighting Man of Mars. So this is a great cover. I think I've seen this used on a couple different books, but it was originally A Fighting Man of Mars that this cover belongs to. Ac excellent, excellent cover. Has all of Roy Crankle's strengths, I think, are on display in that cover there. This next one is pretty interesting. This is The Wizard of Venus. The Wizard of Venus, which is the final Venus story from Edgar Rice Burroughs. Here's Carson Napier there, st standing off against The Wizard of Venus. Great cover. And... Here is that particular cover we were talking about. It was originally uh, for The Land of Hidden Men, which is a retitled Jungle Girl. Jungle Girl was the original Burroughs story. This was just excellent. Just a beautiful, beautiful cover. And this is one of his Pellucidor covers. The Land Within the Earth, Pellucidor. Tanner of Pellucidor. This is the third novel of Pellucidor. Great, great cover. This guy, this guy knows what's going on, running away from that mammoth. That's pretty much what I'd be doing, too. Then we have the Eternal Savage, which you've probably seen before if you watch this channel, because I just read this book not too long ago. 
I really like this next cover. This is The Moon Maid. The Moon Maid. That's a good cover. Frazetta did his own version of this too, I think. I think he did a Moon Maid cover as well. But I really like this cover by Crankle. Uh, this is probably my favorite. That one right there. Here's another novel I read not too long ago, The Outlaw of Torn. The Outlaw of Torn. This is a good one, but I have to say the Frazetta version was better for The Outlaw of Torn. But another excellent cover. And this is one of my favorites because it has some of the things that Crankle was so good at, which was dinosaurs and saber-tooth saber -tooth tigers. He, he loved saber tooth tigers. And this is the land that time forgot. Probably one of Burroughs' best novels, The Land That Time Forgot. And this is the best cover for The Land That Time Forgot you'll ever find is this Crankle cover right here. Just magnificent. Uh, you see this cover, you want to read this book. And then later on in the series, this is the second book. And actually, it's the second part of one novel. This is The People That Time Forgot. When Ace published The Land That Time Forgot, it split it up into three parts. And so Crankle got to do three covers for The Land That Time Forgot. And this is for part two. Another great cover. So these, these covers are how I was introduced to this artist. I just love them. I love the atmosphere, and he seemed to capture the spirit of Edgar Rice Burroughs. But he didn't just illustrate Edgar Rice Burroughs' books. He also illustrated uh, some of the work of my very favorite artist of all time, and that would be Robert E. Howard. I have this book. This is a magnificent book, The Sowers of, of the Thunder. This is by Robert E. Howard. And this was a Donald Grant book. Uh, yeah, Donald M. Grant. This was published in 1973. So this is a book of stories by Robert E. Howard, the creator of Conan the Barbarian. These are some of his historical stories. And this is beautifully illustrated by Crankle. And I'll take off this dust jacket because he also did uh, the design for the cover itself for the book. Really cool, really nice work. Spectacular end papers there by Crankle. And I particularly like this edition because it's signed by Crankle. It's signed not to me, but to somebody named Bob Sidebottom. Bob Sidebottom, I've got your book. But that is Crankle's signature, so it's kind of cool that I have a signed book of Crankle's, of Crankle's art, and beautiful cover page there with a cover illustration. And this book, all along the text, uh, nearly every page of the text, there's illustrations just in there, embedded within the text itself. So it's really pretty cool. It's a wonderful way to read this book with all these great little atmospheric illustrations by Crankle. Just wonderful, wonderful uh, illustrations. And there's some full page illustrations in here too. This is really cool. Another great picture by Crankle. Let's see if I can get a couple of those full page illustrations, if I could find them. They're in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Yeah, look at that. That's awesome. I mean, this guy had such talent, and he was so good at capturing the essence of a writer's work and doing his own interpretation of that. Look at that. That's just amazing. Such wonderful detail. I mean, he's got that ancient city. Uh, he's got it all going on, Crankle. Just a fantastic illustrator. Yeah, this book is incredible. So this was a really great artistic achievement by Crankle. But of course, he did a lot more than that. So let's take a look at some of the other work that he did that you could find in this wonderful volume. This was originally published in hardcover. I think it was a hardcover with a slipcase. But unfortunately, I don't have that one. But I'm pretty happy to have this one just because 
There's so much wonderful artwork in here. And there's a lot of commentary by other artists and writers who knew and respected Crankle and his work. Uh, just a lot of great stuff in here. Has some of his comic book work. I think this was for either Eerie or Creepy. I can't remember. Does it say? Yeah, it was for the first issue of Creepy Magazine. That comic's work was done for. And, of course, here we have the full illustration there for Jungle Girl. Uh, yeah, just such wonderful work. Have to be careful going through this so I don't, you know, get any of the nudes. Lots of nakedness in Crankle's work. That's pretty good. That's for the third part of The Land That Time Forgot, Out of Times of This. Wonderful work. Just some really cool stuff in here. Let me go forward to a little bit. Let me see. I don't want to, there's something I don't want to miss in here. This is actually some early Robert E. Howard illustrations there. He did uh, some work for a fanzine called Amra, which was kind of how he was discovered by the paperback publishers. That's uh, the Eternal Savage, the original illustration for the Eternal Savage. And there's some of the reproductions for some of the Ace books that I don't have to show you. Like, I don't have The Escape from Venus or The Cave Girl. Don't have either one of those with the crinkle cover, unfortunately. And, oh, here's a one for print, Otis Attleberry Klein's, Klein's Prince of Peril. I do have this book, but I just forgot to dig it out. But there's the original painting for that Otis Klein book. So much cool stuff. And uh, here we're going to get into some of his Robert E. Howard work. There is an early illustration of Conan there. And he has a really interesting Conan illustration. Now this is this is Roy Crankle's portrait of Conan. Now so this is was a picture done long before the Conan comic book existed and some of the versions of Conan that we are so familiar with. So you have a very different Conan here because this is straight out of Crankle's imagination and what he pictured when he was reading Conan. So this is definitely a tough character, but very different from the version of Conan that we're used to. Uh, I like it. I like it an awful lot. Not exactly how I picture Conan, but still, it's pretty cool. And there's the book I just showed you there. So much cool stuff in here. Uh, we've got uh, Richard A. Lupoff write some stuff in here about Crankle. That's a, a very a, a, a very good uh, Crankle woman there. He always had that distinct look uh, for his ladies. Let's see. Yeah. Scrolling past all the nakedness. Yeah. So much good stuff in here. Look at that. So cool. Such a brilliant, brilliant artist. And so as I mentioned, he did work for, for Creepy and Eerie magazines. That's his version of the Wendigo there. That's really cool. And there's a page that he did uh, for either Creepy or Eerie. Creepy. It was for Creepy. That page he did there. It's full of awesome stuff in this book. And... This book ends up with a little piece. It finishes up with a little piece by Frank Frazetta. And uh, this is pretty cool. That's a picture of Crankle done by Frank Frazetta. So Frank Frazetta and Roy Crankle were very good friends. And they hung out all the time. And they influenced each other's art. And they helped out each other with their work. And so they were very close friends. And Crankle, unfortunately, died in his early 60s, I believe, from cancer. And so in the back of this book, Frank Rosetta writes a very moving tribute to his friend. And this is how that tribute ends. 
I never thought he was a particularly courageous guy until the end. And I tell you, I personally was very, very shocked for his courage. I always th thought of myself as the macho guy. I thought Roy was, well, you know, just a great lot of fun, but a big sissy. Well, he really showed me something at the end. I mean, knowing that he had terminal cancer and facing up to it as he did, I picture myself just crumbling under those conditions, tough as I thought I was. He showed me a lot. The guy was awfully, awfully brave. Roy was very special. I don't know of anybody in the world, and this is the gospel truth that I loved as much as him. And there is Roy at work on one of his paintings. Fantastic artist, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about him with you. Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.